Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org and in this video I'm going to talk you through a security lab topology that I've created at not only in LibreOffice Draw but this is also uh, a physical uh, setup that I have in my computer lab that I'm going to be you know, working with and doing more uh, penetration testing and things like that. So first thing I'm going to do, talk about the hardware and then talk about the workflow and, and you know, attack vectors and things like that. So first thing, the big thing uh, is the Zen server itself. Everything inside this blue rectangle is virtualized. So you think of this whole thing here as one computer tower and that's the Zen server. So I'll talk about that later. Then out of that physical Zen server we have an Ethernet cable. That Ethernet cable goes to a switch. Everything else, by the way, is physical. No, no other virtualized stuff. So Zen server connects to the switch. Then access point is also connected to the switch. So this is for wireless attacks. Now if you take a look, I have this whole thing, this whole it's all it doesn't end with the Zen server. So this whole thing is the domain. Like say this is a business and everything inside this orange rectangle is all company business owned equipment which means that it can all connect with and talk with each other. So, like I said, access point for physical, or not for physical, for wireless, uh, wireless attacks and things like that. Then I also have a physical laptop. So, again, like I said, the physical laptop and the Windows 7 workstation, these should both be on the domain. So, uh, the physical can connect with the virtual, they can ping, they can share files, uh, all that kind of stuff. So there's that. And then coming off of the switches or the switch here, we have either a router or a firewall. So this is these are going to be the edge devices. So I have both and I can put you know, I can put either the router in or I can put the firewall in. And then connected on the opposite side of that is my WAN emulation, which is probably just going to be a switch or it could be another router. The point is, it's outside of the domain, this big network itself. So, uh, you know, think of this cloud, this is the internet, this is from the outside. So then, if we trace it this way, we get to my testing computer. So that's what you're looking at here, and uh, so testing from Windows, also testing from probably a Kali Linux VM, and uh, multiple attack vectors. So. The reason for these is that I have multiple network interface cards on this computer here. So uh, with wireless I can attack the access point. With one NIC I can assign it a pseudo public IP and I can go to my internet cloud, my internet emulation and then go down to here and then I can attack from the outside. You know, depending on how specific you want to get, I mean you could put in another router up here and say that's the default gateway of you know like of the service provider and then do that or you can just have a switch going in and then connecting to these it shouldn't be for our security purposes here uh, we shouldn't really get too deep into like the whole network topology and how realistic it is the realistic is this it's coming from a public IP coming into the edge device which sees that hey this is a public IP this is not from our network and then it processes and does with those packets whatever it does. So that is the attack vector number one. Pseudo public IP coming in, hitting the edge devices from the outside. And then we already talked about the wireless. Then I also have another NIC which is connected directly via a switch, of course, uh, which is connected directly to the Zen server box itself. So I can attack directly the Zen server here. I can go through my internet emulation or I can attack wirelessly. So three different ways, uh, three different types of attacks that you can do and uh, you know gives me some flexibility. So the reason I'm, I did it like this is so it's not just okay I can test one di one type of thing and then oh well then I gotta do you know build another type of network to do another type. So I tried to give myself you know like where I can set this up and just set it and forget it and then just do a bunch of stuff from this setup and I think I've kinda I've kinda gotten to that point or at least I'm getting there so uh, so basically like I said testing computer internet emulation wireless 
and then directly in insider attacks that kind of thing so that's kind of it but let me go over the real big meat of the security lab is the virtualized machines in the Zen server itself so here on the, the right you see the pseudo I guess we'd say public or employee you know non secure workspace so I have a Windows 7 workstation remember this physical laptop is you know all these physical things here this the Zen server is not the domain it's just part of the domain so this physical laptop is still you know it still signs in it still contacts the domain controller to get you know access credentials and then all that stuff so uh, so that's that uh, we have the domain controller then running Active Directory and as you can see here it's running uh, it's more of a also acting as a pivot point into my secure network which we'll talk about in a minute but on the public non-secure side right we have our just a Windows 7 workstation I think I have a couple of them but you know we don't need to clutter this up with a bunch of icons so Windows 7 workstation and uh, you know with users uh, and computers on the domain and then here OWASP web server this is uh, I believe the open web application security project or something like that uh, if you search OWASP VM there is a virtualized machine template that you can download and then just import it uh, it's like you know pre-built virtual machine import it into Zen server or whatever hypervisor you're using and then that machine is is already built for you and this contains a bunch of vulnerable web applications so what I would do is I would end up port forwarding these guys to this web server and then I'd be able to attack from the outside you know pretty realistic like uh, what you know what you do in real life so uh, like I said vulnerable web applications and uh, there's that one metasploitable this is a, uh, a I believe it's an Ubuntu server that has a bunch of different vulnerable applications you know like intentionally vulnerable applications that uh, you know you should be able to attack and exploit so and I believe the OWASP I believe that's also Ubuntu so two Ubuntu machines here uh, purposely vulnerable and this again is a virtual machine template so if you uh, search Metasploitable 2 and then you can download it and then just import that virtual machine uh, I also just threw in a CentOS web server so again or you know I can do other things it doesn't have to be only a web server I can do like a database stuff on here just whatever services whatever Linux based services I can throw onto this CentOS machine here uh, like I said Windows 7 workstation where the you know where the workers uh, do their thing and create all kinds of havoc themselves which they do so uh, you know there's that and then these are all like I said connected to a virtual switch uh, the 2012 Windows 2012 server uh, more of a flex server uh, I don't have any specific things for it yet maybe like a storage maybe maybe database uh, I'm not sure but it's there so these are all like I said on the public side so Windows 7 through the connection to my uh, like this can Windows 7 workstation can ping google.com right now so it's just how my network is set up I have a switch and then the switch is going out to the internet all that stuff that's not my security lab that's my just my home network setup so uh, but anyways the point is these should have depending on the security uh, requirements these should all have connectivity at least out and then depending on in uh, OWASP as a web server yeah you'd have to give inside access so like you know if it's running a web service that you want your customers to use you need to have them able to get through the internet into your into that web server so uh, like I said connectivity out and in depending on security requirements maybe we can shut this 2012 server down only for you know no uh, only for inside communication it just depends but then we go back up to our domain controller you see I have two two lines coming off of it and what this is this is kind of the pivot point of the regular non-secure and the secure section of this domain so the secure section is basically what I have is I created a network where these the XP 
can talk with the secure server, can talk with Windows 7, can talk with XP, but they cannot talk with anybody else. They can't even ping this Windows 7 workstation. Windows 7 workstation can't even ping this Windows 7 secure. If I wanted to set it up where they could, and probably will end up doing that, it's going to be facilitated through the domain controller. And, you know, that's kind of how some of these security holes open up is to say, well, uh, we really need to figure this thing out with the Windows XP workstation connecting to the 2012 server. Okay, well, let's open it up through here, through the domain controller, and then, boom, there's your security hole. You know, things like that. So, basically, in the secure section, the goal is that secure server and the files or whatever is on there. That's the, you know, that's the money shot of the whole security lab. Uh, you know, like the the thing that should be the most difficult to get to and, uh, you know, have the most valuable information. On top of having, you know, a uh, bunch of vulnerable web applications, a bunch of vulnerable, uh, you know, other services and applications and other things like that. So, like I said, uh, the secure, this is just like kind of a lockdown network. So, you know, the goal, get to that lockdown network and get into that secure server. So, and remember, this is, this is not the domain here, this is just the Zen server. The physical laptop is still part of the domain. This access point can be part of the domain. The switch can be part of the domain. So, like I said, the physical laptop is still going to log in, uh, join the domain, the Active Directory domain, and then, you know, Bob Jones is going to log in here as a, like a domain computer, and then that request is going to go to the domain controller which says yes Bob Jones let him on there you go so don't get it confused that the whole security lab is the Zen server and everything outside is something extra it's not everything in the orange rectangle this is think of it this is the business right here it starts with the router the firewall at the edge and then it goes all the way through the various layers into the secure section to that secure server. So, like I said, the way I try to do it, I try to give myself as many options to do as many different kind of attacks without having to reconfigure constantly. And uh, like I said, that's that's how uh, that's how I set it up. So that's all I had for this video, and stay tuned for future videos.